Natural Dog with Angela Ardolino, and my guest today is Dr. PJ Broadfoot. She's one of my favorite holistic veterinarians. I, I love her so much because she never stops seeking more information, the truth, how to solve a problem, try new things. She's been in practice for, oh my gosh, I think over 30 years now and is and trained in everything you could possibly imagine and has used and tried everything. And the reason she's one of my favorite holistic vets is that the moment that news about cannabis, CBD and hemp came out and that it could benefit our animals, she immediately started researching, using it um, and finding out more about it. So when we met, you can imagine how much fun we had talking about all the benefits. So we keep up on the research and everything that's going on. And of course, I wanna talk to her about what the heck do we do when we find a lump, bump, or tumor? Because so often I see the wrong thing done. Now that I have a, a, a dog with a serious cancer tumor, um, I had to find out, do I amputate it? Does that help? Does that make things worse? Do I take a biopsy? You know, all, all those questions that we go through because we don't know the, same, the right thing to do. And often conventional vets will just immediately go to uh, getting a biopsy and removing the tumor. And that's not always the best uh, plan of action. So we're going to talk about today what to do when you find a lump, bump or tumor on your pet. This is Odie, my baby old man, AKA Barky Von Schnauzer. He's 11 years old and the love of my life. So Odie's favorite thing is to run up the stairs at night when we go to bed. And I noticed a couple years ago that he would stop midway up. And that's when I knew he was suffering from arthritis and joint pain. So the only treatments that I was being offered were harmful prescription drugs that cause liver damage and suppress the immune system. And I just wasn't willing to do that for my senior dog. And full spectrum CBD oil was the only thing that worked. I would give it to him and literally within 15 minutes, he was puppy-like again. I could see that he wasn't in pain, he wasn't panting, he was running up the stairs. So on Odie, I use Ease, which is a 550 milligram full spectrum CBD oil with frankincense essential oil, turmeric and hemp oil, and it's great for arthritis, aches and pains, and allergies. No one likes to see their dog suffer. I know I didn't. And to be able to find an all natural product that doesn't cause additional harm and helps them is a lifesaver for me and it brings me so much peace of mind. CBD Dog Health, healing naturally. How is my favorite holistic a veterinarian doing this today, which is, what are we, in the winter, but it's beautiful where I am, but I heard you're in snow. We're, we've got ice and snow, and I am recording from my house. So I, you know, I'm, for someone from that came from Kansas and had to drive in this stuff, uh, you know, it's been 40 years. I just don't, I don't like to get out on the slick stuff. I only send out my yeah, husband no, and my you, grandson so that they, so it's quiet in the house. I hear you. <laughs> It gets cold here. There's no snow. It's cold, and I don't want to leave my house. I'm like, oh, good, an excuse to make a fire in Florida. Yeah. And, <laughs> and a big pot of soup. <laughs> That's right. Well, the reason I'm I'm so happy you're my guest, and it, the timing is perfect. Um, those of you who don't know, she's uh, Dr. PJ Broadfoot is also on our board of advisors for CBD Dog Health, and one of my favorites uh, to share research that you find everywhere, and we just love sharing it back and forth and going, yep, yep, we knew that, we knew that. So I love being able to do that with you. Um, but uh, as you know, Dr. Zach Pilisoff, our chief vet for CBD Dog Health and myself, we do consultations. And we do consultations and they're usually second opinion, uh, pharmaceuticals aren't working, they wanna know what to, how to use, incorporate cannabis or a full spectrum hemp extract. So that's what most of them are. But I am telling you, I am losing my mind <laughs> because, of course, we get the vet records. And I can see time after time again, medications given for no reason, mm -hmm. um, Metro, Zyda, Doll, what I always say wrong. Yep. The, the, the antibiotic is handed out like candy. Mm -hmm. Everybody gets it no matter what. Yeah, and I they will vaccinate dogs goes, that have, you know, clinically that they you know it's the the 
insert say not to be get to be given only to healthy pets. You know, a dog that has cancer or allergies or you know exactly. any autoimmune disease. Well, most is of the dogs healthy. we see. Right. Most of the dogs we're seeing, there's a serious situation. Mm-hmm. There's cancer, there's seizures, they're not walking. We, you know, of course, it's like their last plea. What effort. else could I yeah. be doing for my pet? <laughs> exactly. And then we're looking at it and they've given them their vaccines that they didn't need, mm-hmm. this antibiotic, Fortiflora that does nothing. And I'm telling you, it's time after time again. And time after time again, I watch Dr. Zach go, why did they prescribe you that? And they're like, I, I don't, don't know. know. So... I feel like I am a little bit more angry and going to be a little bit more louder so that our pet parents understand that we have to be our pet's best advocate. We do. And I don't want to sound like I am a vet hater because I am certainly not that. No. Um, but I need everyone to know that the biggest piece of information that ever helped me was the fact that our a conventional veterinarian gets out of school and is not taught about diet and nutrition. Mm-hmm. They certainly don't know anything about the endocannabinoid system, ozone therapy, vitamin therapy, laser therapy, all these amazing things that heal our animals and help our animals' immune system to fight off disease and keep them healthy. Now, and that's and it's a, kind of like the opposite. Yeah, that's been a problem in, you know, that really came down from the, uh, it's an offshoot of the human uh, medical system that got changed with the Flexman report uh, years and years and years ago that was, oh. that was specifically designed, AMA was designed or was, was formed um, to crush homeopathy. And uh, the Flexman report was, was developed by the Rockefellers to, uh, take anything out that was not pharmaceutical driven. The Rockefellers who also did a really very important in keeping cannabis illegal mm-hmm. and an, as an illicit drug. Yes. Any, any, anything Sorry. that, com- that uh, competed with, um, with the drug based uh, pharma, big pharma based um, profits was pretty much crushed. And, you know, my, my grandfather uh, was my step grandfather was an MD, and the person he had taking care of his own family was an MD homeopath. So obviously before wow. the Fle- yeah, obviously before the Flexner report. So I think that's the reason my stepdad was really kind of an open minded allopathic guy. He just he was a brilliant diagnostician, and he used things that other people didn't use, like Rawolfia for high blood pressure. Said it was by far the best. Uh, high blood pressure medication, but it was, it's an herbal, obviously. Uh, it's been used since the time of Hippocrates, I think. And he had it when they pulled it off the market because of the latest, greatest high blood pressure drugs. Um, he had it compounded for his patients. You had to titrate the dose. So, you know, you had to be, you had to be on top of it. But he said by far worked better than anything else. So, you know, that was just one of the many really, really good, um, herbal type things like Hawthorne. Hawthorne improves the rate contractility and oxygenation of the heart. You never hear about it in conventional medicine. Uh, so do you believe that there is a natural remedy for everything that a pharmaceutical offers out there? Like, is there anything that oh, and can't be found I would say in nature? That- yes. And not only that, but they are are there are natural medicines for things which for which they have no conventional answers. So, you know, immune, immune modification, you know, thymus and colostrum. And there's so many things that we could use that are biomodulators. They're, they're immune uh, modifiers. Uh, blue green algae is mm-hmm. another one, you know, and, and, you know, we, that's, those are the cases you get, of course, are the ones that have failed conventional therapy. And they're, they're, right. you can get some remarkable results if you just give the body the right things. The body, it's like the CBD, you, you know, you have all that cascade of, you know, every, the cannab, the cannabial system is in, you know, every cell. So, you know, right. you need to have the, you need to be able to replace uh, or replenish the, the ones that have, we either don't feed it or we, uh, we do things that, that tie up the, the, cannabinoids in the system or we just get old yeah or we just get older yes. and we don't produce as, as many, many endocannabinoids that's so uh, and that's why you hear me all the time if you are a senior um <laughs> or you have a senior pet 
everybody should be on a full spectrum hemp extract every day. It's just awesome at keeping inflammation um, down and keeping your immune system modulated, whether it needs to be up regulated you know, or down regulated. Up for some reason mm-hmm. or, or calm down, which mine, as I have an autoimmune disease, oh, is, I didn't know that does a great job at doing that. I have rheumatoid arthritis. Ah. I haven't had any flare-ups now for a while. So I don't even, you know, know if I have it anymore. I'm going to, I think of course, the tendency research is, and investigate is always that. there. But, you know, just talking about the, you know, whether you need to ramp it up or, or the right now, just in the last couple of weeks, there's been the data on CBD for coronaviruses you know, improving the, the mm-hmm. outcomes with coronaviruses. Well, that's relatively new data. That's the other thing. I feel like I finally am completely over that <laughs> after, you know, getting COVID. I feel like I'm finally over that. So I feel so good, mm-hmm. but I have flare ups, especially if I'm super stressed, which I have been extremely stressed and I get flare ups and I ha- and I'm not getting them in the, and of course I do my full spectrum hemp extract every day, but I'm including medicinal mushrooms now also yes. and some other adaptogens mm-hmm. yeah, the, and the, game changers. Those are, those are huge. Uh, and if you can, if you can incorporate some thymus extract with that, you know, it's the linchpin of the immune system. So awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. So I have you on because where I see a lot of these, um, you know, cases go wrong is that they've simply brought their dog in because they have found a lump, a bump or a tumor. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to ask, you know, my favorite holistic, what would you do? What would your advice be, you know, to someone if they have found a lump, bump or tumor? And there's a couple things that people need to understand. You know, dogs don't get um, wrinkles you know, how they show age is usually lump bumps and tumors. So there's definitely, as your dog gets older, there's going to be some weird things that Mm -hmm. pop up. Um, Most of them you can get rid of by diet change Mm -hmm. or putting some salve on it, Mm -hmm. a full spectrum hemp salve on it, figuring out what's causing them. But yeah, they will. Like my 16 year old had, has always had a little bump on him and it's gotten a little bigger as he gets older. If I put the full spectrum hemp extract, it goes back to its regular Mm -hmm. size. So it's pretty interesting how that works. But what would your advice be? Well, if you've got a, I tend to be a watch, say a senior or geriatric. I tend to be a bit of a watchful, watchful waiter. Um, We do use topicals. On most of them, because it's a no harm strategy. Uh, you know, the, right. the, it, it's like you said, you know, the body a lot of times partitions things into the mesenchymal space or the matrix, which has gotten pretty much ignored for the last, you know, 150 years. What does that mean? It's the, it's the gel between the cells. So if it's, so the, if you look at like this area under the skin, What's not skin, skin mm-hmm. is one organ, the, the interstitium or the matrix or the mesenchyme is this probably the biggest organ in the body. So, other, you know, other than the, the, the intestinal tract, which has, you know, it, although it's, um, you know, if you, if you laid it out end to end, it'd be like a football field. It's only one cell layer thick, but yeah, isn't that amazing? That's why leaky gut is such a big problem for, for us and for our pets. But the mesenchyme mm-hmm. is the space where the lymph lives. That's where everything, and you know, it, we ignored it forever. Uh, but the fibroblasts live there. So now we pay attention to the matrix or the interstitium because that's where they harvest the, the fibroblasts from. It is a hugely bioactive space. And if you don't pay attention to what's in there, so the body traps things in that space. We tend to, um, Wow. So instructive, somebody that wants to go down a rabbit hole and look, look up Reckwig's, uh, table of homotoxicology. Um, the, we inter, tend to interfere with the first, the first phases, which is, um, the, which is the inflammation phase and the fluid phases of the body. So if you have a fever, uh, yeah. and you, you know, take a antipyretic aspirin or Tylenol or whatever, then you've just interfered with the body's ability to get rid of the, of that fever or that virus. Body defense mechanisms in humans run 10 times faster at 103 degrees. So, you know, we start sucking down the Tylenol when it gets to 100, we're uncomfortable, but the body has to put that virus somewhere because we just interfered with its ability to split that virus. 
So wow. if you don't, if you don't get rid of it, then the body next develops an inflammatory phase. That's which is what the fever is. You know, that first phase is like vomiting, diarrhea. You know, if you've got food poisoning, the last thing you want to do is trap it in there. So, you know, those are physiologically right. correct phases. So at some point in time, things get moved and stuck in the mesenchymal space before it gets to the cells. And anything that gets stuck in that phase, you know, the body walls it off, tries to tries to partition it. Well, sometimes it shows up as a lump or a bump. So, you know, do we sometimes is do we want to turn those loose? Not always. Um, do we want to take them out? Not always. There's actually a big controversy about removing lumps just because they're there. Because sometimes, well, often those, those, uh, that primary tumor has put out recruits and, and put them in nests in different places in the body. You know, how many times do you hear about people that they took a, a mass out and two months later it's everywhere? It was already everywhere. But that primary right. tumor sometimes kind of puts a lid on tumors elsewhere. So, uh, you know, you don't always, it, it's not always physiologically correct. It's hard to know whether it is or not. And, you know, the other thing is when you take, when you. Well, what I, what I keep seeing is that uh, the tumor, because well, they've, they've had the tumor removed and it's back mm -hmm. with a vengeance. Mm -hmm. um, and the same place. Bigger, growing faster, and Elsewhere. popping up other places. Yeah. And the, and part right. of that so is so that's when they've given up on they've given up on that, and now they want to know what, what else, else can, can they do? they can do because well, the that didn't system, work. We did all that, and the immune system um, does not does not recognize cancers. It's a, it, it part of the thing is that it coats itself with a slime, which is got the same charge as killer T cells. So it gets under the radar. Wow. So, uh, and then the, you know, the nest themselves, that's called seed and soil. And the body sends out recruits. Um, there's some, there's layers of fascinating data on some of that. So, uh, and anesthesia, quite frankly, disconnects the immune system to some degree. So it, it interferes with the, um, with the recognition of where those are. Uh, and opioids, interestingly enough, I was down to wrap. I was actually looking for the Berkeley. The, I'm, uh, and several people remembered the study and not one of us could find it. But there was a study, retrospective study done eons ago that, where they asked people um, if they would do, if they were happier with conventional therapy or not doing anything. And they found that, that for many people, they lived longer and with a better quality of life by doing nothing. Now, I don't believe in doing nothing. I think we yeah. can do things to improve quality of life and to help our patients do better. Uh, and for many lumps and bumps, if they're particularly if they're surface lumps and bumps, you can get them to regress without you know without doing anything. I've done it so many times. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And, and I'm going to go back to the not doing anything. I don't believe in not doing anything. I don't either. And one of the reasons, right? And one of the reasons that I created my products was because I wanted the power to get rid of the pain and suffering. Mm -hmm. So that if I do have someone that's, um, that is gonna live and be happier without going under surgery mm -hmm. and being knocked out with some sort of opioid medication and I can just get rid of the pain, mm -hmm. suffering and anxiety and they can live their life, that's it. Did I believe that I would be able to get rid of cancer with it? Or I, I'm gonna change how I say that. Mm -hmm. I didn't get rid of the cancer. I helped the animal's body get rid of the cancer. Yeah. So I didn't cure it. I didn't get rid of it. I helped. I need to start counting because I know I'm in the hundreds now. Hundreds of animals bodies get rid of cancer in their body. So things CBD, for instance, will turn actually turns cells into natural killer cells and goes and searches for that cancer. THC is a cancer killer. Yeah. It literally stops the that. blood supply mm -hmm. and they die. So these are research studies that have been both done for human and animal. And guess what? In the human, they're doing them on animals. So, um, you know, learning this and then applying it and watching it happen has been one of the most incredible things that I've ever experienced. And I know you've been seeing this over and over again using you know, all kinds of different, mm -hmm. um, yeah, and something, natural you know, you, you talked about remedies. the, the uh, CBD 
the, some of the cannabinoids, THC, would be far better used, uh, served as, as post, if you're going to do surgery, post surgery than, uh, opiates, because somewhere in my rabbit hole that I've been down recently, um, opiates actually increase the risk of metastases, which I had not read before. So wow. that's a little terrifying because it, because they're so widely used. And I don't know the mechanism of action. I haven't been far enough down the rabbit hole to, to figure that out. But there is certainly data that says that um, opiates increase the risk of, of metastatic disease. So, you know, I don't know whether that's a, wow. an immune, whether that's an immune function. I, I really don't know. Or if it's a function of something that's happening uh, in the mesenchymal space that, that we're not aware of. But I had not read that until... Uh, in the last week or two. So, you know, there's another one of those kind of well, golden, golden. It makes sense. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. it makes sense because it's, what are they there for? They're there to, to stop pain, correct? Is that the only reason that you take an opioid, right? To stop pain? Well, yeah. And, but you know, you look at the. Doesn't do anything else. Well, it does, but it had the, but they don't side do effect, anything but else. But they're side effects. I mean, cause opiates stop cough. They, they cause, um, constipation so they they're having other effects um but like right. i said but what i'm saying is that th the reason you take use, them is because yeah why not use thc exactly if you could get the the or the or cbds where you can get the pain relief that you're looking for uh, without the downside of actually increasing the metastatic potential that's right all right we got to take a short break. And when we come back, we'll talk a little bit more about, um, you know, what are the benefits? What should you do if you do have one? Do we biopsy it? Do we determine whether it's attached to something? Um, so we'll talk about that when we come back right after this break. And we're back with Dr. PJ Bradfoot talking about lumps, bumps, and tumors and what we should do when we find one on our pet. Um, so I know, you know, we talked about that space in between uh, those tumors. I know I had a rescue who had an MCT attached to her spine. I knew I couldn't get under that. Um, what are like, for what could you tell us as pet parents of us doing our own evaluation before we go to the vet? So that we can kind of have an idea of, yes, I want it biopsied. No, I don't. I want it cut out. I don't want it cut out because I know I've read so many, um, so many papers about how the threat of biopsy and going into a tumor and interrupting it, uh, removing a tumor and not getting it all. Sometimes it's an easy, it's easy to get to them and you can get them all out. And sometimes you can't. And what's the risk of, do I leave it or do I attempt to take some of it? Cause it can make things a lot worse. What do we do? Well, and, and then you've actually touched on some of them in that, in that bit of conversation. Um, quite frequently you can tell somewhat by whether or not it's mobile. If it's attached to anything, if there's something underneath it that's that it's attached to, like your MCT that was that's deeper, um, sometimes you can tell that there's a stalk on it. If that's the case, then it is making itself a blood supply, and it tends to be a little more likely to be a, a problematic. Or if it's uh, if there's multiples, sometimes that's the rate of the speed at which it grows uh, are clues as to whether it's a problem or not. Uh, and I'm. I have a maybe a different view of of things than some people do. If I'm going to invade a space, I'd rather take it out. Um, you know, they've shown in in some cancers that when you do biopsies, you leave needle tracks, and you know that's just 
you're asking for trouble if that's the case, um, you know, because you can be pulling cancer cells out of the out of that mass and and pulling them through into the interstitial space where they can go other places. Um, so I'm a I'm a little more, you know, if I had a, you know, a breast lump personally, I'd just say take it out. Don't stick needles in it. Just take it out. Yeah. Um, and I don't know if I just need, take the whole damn breast. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even know if I would do that. Quite <laughs> frankly, it kind of depends on on the like the like I said the rate of growth and uh, sometimes it's the appearance because a lot of those little like papilloma looking things they're just their age um, and you know we talked about the mesenchymal space body partition stuff into that space so it's it may wall something off there you look at the at the the number of of uh, patients with lipomas well you know they're just big masses of fat and it's probably just a really good place for the body to stuff trash basically you know it's one of the reasons i think we see so wow. much uh, obesity is that the body's trying to protect the cells by trapping toxins in the fat space so you know those i always notice that it's yeah that it's the overweight dogs that have the fat fatty lipoma on their mm -hmm. chest yeah. and they will sometimes you know, underneath change on their chest with i the, always find them there yeah they'll sometimes change with the amount of fat so, you know, those, mm -hmm. they're, unless they are impeding their quality of life, like we had one one time that had, a, I, I thought it was lipoma just sitting on the outside of the back leg, but it was actually, it was, it, she was having trouble walking. It was actually between the muscle layer. When I got in there, I couldn't find it. It was actually between the muscle layers. Oh. And it's, I kid you not, we pulled out a mass of fat that big. So, wow. you know, that, that, that was, you know, and we had one that, that looked like a saddle on the, on the dog's back. It was so big. So those start, you know, those are, when you start changing the quality of life, then you may want to take some of those off, you know, big, big old lumps that they're dragging around on a back leg, you know, then you have, but you have to weigh anesthetic risk, you know, against the, against the, the risk of, or against the quality of life type questions so an anesthetic risk is a big risk to a geriatric animal it, so it these is. aren't things that's one of the reasons I, nina is a dober is a nine-year-old doberman and even then you know her vets were don't didn't want to amputate because they didn't want to put her under anesthesia i also think they don't think she'd still be alive <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, right. there's that <laughs> if you'd only um, known <laughs> i didn't think right i didn't think um that the tumor would get so big, you know, she's literally walk running around with a tumor, uh, grapefruit on her wrist now. Um, but she has no pain and no metastasis after 20 months. And, you know, I bring this up over and over again because she was given two months to live mm -hmm. if I didn't do anything. And of course I was told to buy a, I went to, um, I go get my blood work bought from an emergency vet here that I trust in like, just so that I get the blood work and x-rays and then cause Zach's in Miami and his practice here isn't open yet. Um, or run to see Marlene. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> Dr. Marlene Siegel, yes. um, you know, handed with, with the x-rays and blood work. Um, but everybody, everything I read, everything told me to chop the leg off, chemo and, and radiation. And then when I read that, it didn't extend life. <clears throat> there wasn't, uh, so I just was like, so why would I pay $10,000, put my dog Ooh, through that. all of that? Mm -hmm. And I knew she's not, she's the alpha dog. She does not have the personality to be weak and sick and whatever. She's pissed off, you know? <laughs> um, and here I am 20 months later, and that's why I'm just going to, I want pet parents to know the alternatives. I can't tell you how many, and it's usually in head or sinus cancers that they've taken, they can't get all of it, and then it just starts going crazy after they've taken some of it. Um, and what do you do in that space? There's really nothing you can do but do something internally, yes. like a full-spectrum hemp extract, like THC if they need it. Mm -hmm. um, as you know, I give Nina 10 milligrams of THC every night and have been for the past 20 months. And she hasn't died. Yep. She's thrived. She is running around with a grapefruit on her on her wrist. It's 
a sight to see and wonderful. And that's why I want parents to know that there is alternatives. You don't always have to immediately turn to um, these things, especially if you're dealing with a senior or geriatric. That's true. Yeah. And, you know, that's the thing that got me started in homotoxicology 25 years or so ago was an osteosarcoma dog or a suspected osteosarcoma. They awesome. didn't do the, they didn't do a biopsy, but we sent the x-rays to Oklahoma state and they said, you know, if you hear hoofbeats, think horses. So, you know, it was a hundred pound uh, Irish wolfhound and, you know, it was in the, it was in one of the awesome. bones that you expected on, you know, one of the long bones. So we, mm-hmm. at that time I knew about Tromiel and nothing else, but I had the orange book and I called heel and I said, I, it's an osteosarcoma. What do you have? They sent me about a half dozen things. Now, tell them what Heal is. Heal, Heal is the company that. Yeah, was, tell people what Heal is. It was the company from uh, that was started in Germany by Dr. Reckwig. So most people, or a lot of people, have heard about Trauma Heal. Some people have heard about Zeal. Um, but it's a it's an entire system of medicine. It is a what are those? Brilliant. They're complex okay, cool. homeopathics, and they're no longer in the United States, awesome. unfortunately, other than a few products because of a lawsuit, um, which is too much to get into. But anyway, that dog lived 18 months. She was running and playing and compressed the bone, uh, and that's why we put her down. We never took the leg off. She never had signs of metastatic disease. The mass was huge. It actually shrunk. So, you know, we, so we combine a lot of homotox did, with the... So wait, what did you say? It was, how big was the, the mass? How big was her tumor? Because I love this. I love knowing. Was this big? Yeah, I've got pictures of it. I'm telling you. And and that tumor actually I would love got to, cause... smaller. And, you know, this is long before I knew about CBD. Um, but it, I was absolutely blown away by that. And my mom was diagnosed with breast cancer that that spring, that fall. And I had already, and I started her on some of the things because she ended up with edema. They took all of her lymph nodes. Um, yeah. So, um, and she's <sighs> 93. Just. I mean, she's made it since 1996. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, there's just things that you. So that that's you why I'm do. screaming it from the rooftops. Exactly. There are just so many things that the body that's- can work with. Um, CBD is a little later to the, to my, to the, my paint box. Um, but, uh, but we've been pretty right. impressed with a lot of the stuff that we've seen just you know, as far as improving quality of life uh, and quantity of life. Some of, you know, it's like, like yours with a, with a, clear osteosarcoma type lesion, you know, they don't, she's out long outlived her prognosis, even if she had conventional therapy. So, you know, we had one of those too. And we actually did, eventually they did take the leg off of her, but she lived um, a couple of years. She was, a, and they put her down, not because of any evidence of metastatic disease. They put her down because uh, she had, her hips finally gave, gave out on her. And she was one of my good, one of my first thymus cases. So, but she lived several years after her. Wow. After her initial diagnosis. Lots of stuff. So I just want people to know that, the, yeah, the information that you're given or fed the most is conventional therapies. And that if you decide to go convention, great, you can still add um, homeopathy and cannabis and these natural alternatives, they go well also with conventional. True. But if you, I just want you to know that you have a choice and that you may be only given certain choices because that's all your doctor knows about and that there's a whole slew of integratives and holistics that have been doing this for a very long time and that we can share these success stories of dogs living 14 months without anything conventional. Mm-hmm. Mine's 20 months. You've got 18 months. This is this is something that's very that that it happens every time you're you're taking care of their immune system and that means I don't want people to think that I'm just giving her a full spectrum hemp extract and that's all I'm doing. That is not. I also have to feed that gut and that immune system. So she is getting a ketogenic raw fed uh, diet the best she eats better than I do. Mm-hmm. She gets a lot of medicinal mushrooms, tons of turkey tail in, in particular, yes. um, and some other wonderful adaptogens. Deer antler velvet. Yes. She gets, yes. which I know you're an expert in that. Yep. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, you know, there's some interesting- people don't, I tell them that about that and they're like, what? <laughs> what is that? 
Well, you know, it's funny because there's there was some there has been some concern about using that because it actually has a it's called VEGF that increases the the blood supply, which is a factor in you know cancer because they produce excess blood supply for themselves. Um, but they've actually done some studies and it has not proven to be um, that problematic. That so I, you know there may be if they were really a seriously bloodborne tumor, but um, there's one of the things I think is useful in it, and I'm probably part, one of the things that's useful in the perna is the collagens, because they actually did a, some a study uh, was a, a a researcher named Pruden that gave collagen to you know stage four end stage metastatic cancers that had responded to nothing, and they had remissions in a lot of those. So my thought on wow. that is that it restores cell to cell communication because collagen is one of the major uh, players in the matrix in what makes the mesenchymal space and the body's cell to cell communication travels that's the internet of the body it travels through that space if you think about it that's the mycelium of the body yeah that's where you know <laughs> that's where the acupuncture meridians reside and they're not in the solid organs and they're not actually in the skin. They're below the skin and they're in the, so that's the, that's the communication highway. If you can restore cell to cell communication, one of the things that happens in cancer is that cells lose their coherence. They lose their biophotons, their light, their cell to cell communication. Um, and they, you know, they sing to one another. So the frequency and the biophotons are off. And so they go off on their own merry way, become a anaerobic uh, group of cells. You know, that's the Warburg uh, oxygen deprivation theory of cancer. There's just a lot of data on that. You know, so electricity goes off on them, the pH changes, and you get you get oxygenation changes. So, you know, if you can restore cell-to-cell communication, some of those, you'll the cells will say, hey, there's something going on here, you know, uh, apoptosis or send send in the killer cells. So things mm-hmm. like um, I love it. Yeah, it's a it's a and it's a no harm strategy. Why not? Uh, it's it has anti inflammatory properties. It has a natural serotonin. It has a natural MAO inhibitor. So it, it can improve the sense of well being. Uh, Glycoflex or or Perna, which is also in some of the deer velvet products. Uh, there is actually some unpublished data with about Perna and DMG that it has anti-cancer properties. So, you know, another, yeah. another thing. I, I mean, I, yeah, people need to understand that can- the cannabis plan isn't the only one that has these amazing medicinal properties. Mm-hmm. There's so many other plants um, and natural products that have them. And when you put them together, they become even more synergistic and work even better. It, right. Exactly. That's, and that's the, that was the word that I, that, that people need to realize is the synergy of things. Um, the body doesn't run, you know, you, when you give the body a full plate, that's one of the reasons I kind of like full plate therapeutics. I like the blue green algae. I like, because it's the bottom of the food chain for omega three fatty acids. It's got all 20 amino acids. Uh, it's a biophoton emitter. It's an alkalizer, which, you know, we're running hyperacidic. As a general rule, we have lactic acid built up in the tissues. So, you know, that, that's, uh, that cancer is a, is a acidic condition. It likes acid. It produces acid. So, you know, things that can naturally alkalize, uh, are, are just, uh, amazingly useful. But, it, but you have to give the body a range of things to work with. You know, CBD works on one set of parameters. The deer antler, the thymus extract, you know, they, they, they synergize beautifully together. Thank you so much. I think we're out of time because, you know, I could talk to you all day. <laughs> I mean, I, I have more things. I, so I'll have you back on like I always do because I didn't even get to certain things. But thank you so much for joining me today. I'm hoping that pet parents realize that there are lots of choices. You always have lots of choices. And sometimes it's a little harder for us to find the more holistic, natural choices because they're being kept from us. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's not easy for them to find. This is a source that you can trust um, here, our show, our website, Dr. PJ Broadfoot, you absolutely can. Can they do consultations with you? Can they do um, telehealth with you? Well, when we can work them into the schedule. We, we do some long distance. Okay, consults. cool. Sure. 
Awesome. So yes, yeah, so you got that alternative also. So if you're living in an area where it's hard to find an integrative or holistic vet, I know um, that you can contact you and that there's several others that also offer this service now. Um, one good thing that came out of the damn pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> True. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you yep. for inviting Thanks me. Thanks so much for joining me. I always have such a pleasure. Always. Thank you so much. Thank you.